Excuse me, Pa. Do you happen to sell the Dutch Army hoop bivvy? Hey, it's an aisle two, second shelf down. Ah, cheers, buddy. Nice one. This must be it. Lovely jabbly. Um, quality sleeping bag. Oh, what's this one? I think that'll do nicely. Polish Lavu, got one of them. Oh, canteens. Let's have a look. Love that. Oh, cutting tools. Yeah, I'll do the job. We've got a price on that. Free. Nice. Can't do better than free. A couple of British Army bibbies, some fuel, stove, have we got, oh what's this, yes we'll have that, oh and a nice cutlery set, sorted. Looking for a bushcraft pack. Um, oh, Savotta. Very nice. Carry more. Oh, there we go. You can't beat a classic British Army long back Bergen. Looks alright, that good nick. Sorted. Excuse me, sir, can you ring me up, please? I'm finished. Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for today's video. Hope you're all well. So we have just been to the army surplus store there as you can see we've picked up a few essentials because today's video is all about camping with military surplus gear. As you can see there we're fully loaded. Looks absolutely ridiculous. It's about 10 feet above my head. Well let's get to camp and I'll show you what we're camping with today. Welcome back. So we have arrived at tonight's camping location. Um, we have been here before and it looks like someone has been here before me because we did have a chair pre-built here uh, on our last camp and that has now been smashed to bits. No surprise at all there. Again, we're camping tonight with pretty much everything military surplus. Now, as I've mentioned, I am not um, a massive collector of military surplus gear, but I have collected a few bits over the years. Um, if you guys that are watching this have sent it or I've come across a few cheap bits myself on car boots, things like that, I've picked it up. Now, if you are the sort of person that disregards weight over absolute bomb-proof robustness and hard-wearing gear, this kit's definitely for you. I do enjoy using it from time to time. I may be mixing it in with my more modern gear, but um, again, I'm not one to go out all the time camping with surplus gear. 
with that said, let's crack into the bag and see what we've brought today. At the top of the pack first, we have the Savota roll mats. I believe this is used by the Finnish army. And we are going to remove this from the lid, just so I've got something to kneel on while I show you the rest of the gear. Now granted, this mat isn't surplus, but it is military use. Um, and this mat has a date of 2018 on this. So we've got somewhere we can kneel while I show you the rest. Now onto the pack itself. This is a 1989 British military Longback Bergen in olive green. Now this one has been issued because it has got a um, soldier's name and number um, stamped throughout the pack. This was picked up by me, if memory serves me correctly, for £8 UK on a car boot many, many years ago now. Absolute bomb-proof piece of kit this. Um, it's just one of them packs that allows you just to throw anything in and forget about it. The pockets on this pack are absolutely monstrous. The um, pouches, sorry. Massive YKK zips and very, very generous pouches. It's made of a very, very um, durable Kajora clips. Absolutely fantastic. And it, it just goes to show this is 1989 and it's still going strong to this day. So uh, military gear surplus does have its place in bushcraft. Massive pocket on the front. Again, YKK zippers. Um, this has got the stove and things in that I'll, I'll go through in a minute. But yeah, quality piece of kit. In the front pocket, we have the cooking stove we are going to be using tonight. This is a prototype British military um, alcohol fuel stove. We'll look at that a bit closer in a bit. Um, this was given to me at the Bushcraft show about two years ago now. Cracking bit of kit again. A couple of tinders in there and a bottle of meths. We also have the burner for the stove, which is a little Descati um, alcohol burner. Going in the top pocket. Again, these pockets are absolutely monstrous. We have my gloves. These are the pegs we're going to be pegging out the sleep system with tonight. We have my fire bellows that I have recently just um, refound. Cutlery is the German Army three-piece cutlery set. I have shown this before on the gear room tour. Um, we have a knife spoon, knife, <laughs> knife spoon and fork in there, and a very useful can opener. So we'll be using that tonight. Again, that is military surplus. A couple of tenders from Twisted Fire Starter uh, to ensure we get that fire going tonight, and more pegs and a fire steel. Turning the pack around, we can undo the first buckles on the lid. We have another pocket just here. Again, very large and accommodating. In here we have cordage, just in case. And we also have plenty of coffee for tonight's camp. A bit more cordage in there. Always carry cordage, very important. Going into the top of the pack. Got a quick release not there to keep everything secure. Again, this pack is very overstuffable, and I believe when you've got the side pockets on this pack as well, you're looking at around 120 litres capacity. Um, DD hammocks, camo, tart 4x4. We are going to set up an admin area um, tonight just to have the fire under in case we do get the downpours. But tonight's sleep system will be kept separate aside because uh, I want to test the waterproof ability of that bit of kit. So there we have that. A couple of pots for tonight. We have the British Army um, aluminium cut kit. I believe this is British Army. It could be anything. Again, I am no specialist. We have a packet of short crust, um, short cake. Tonight's tea. We're only on tin food. Again, we're only cooking on the alcohol stove. So we've got a tin of chicken soup. And we've got two tins of beans and sausage. Fantastic. Tonight's sleeping bag is a new acquisition to my kit again and I put this to you guys on the um, room tour video if you remember asking you if any of you recognize this bag um, it turns out there was a company called Buffalo who, who made this um, sleeping bag and it is actually the identical piece um, to the Buffalo bag so this is a Buffalo bag um, and it's actually a three-piece system. I've got the first piece and I've paired this tonight with um, a lightweight jungle bag just for a bit of extra warmth. But yeah, the buffalo bag. It's also made by someone else and I can't remember who it is. Is it Fenetech or something like that, Fentec? 
Um, but I tried this the other night in the house with that bag and it was very, very warm. So I'm hoping that will keep me warm enough tonight. Pertex outer shell and um, Opti Zips. Zips pre seem pretty rugged as well. So looking forward to using that in combination with tonight's shelter, which we'll pull out now. This is the Cheaty Air Mat I told you about. This is the um, Cheetah Summit Ethelite XT, just for a bit of warmth under us. Um, again, this the mat, the Savota mat's only half inch, and my body won't be able to sleep on that all night. Not a chance. We have the obligatory warm bag. This has got extra socks, uh, a fleece top, things like that, and it also doubles as my pillow. And tonight, oh, we've got another couple of water bottles. Um, this is a German Avon water bottle, and again the German. So I think both of these pots actually, um, both of these canteens are German. We have my preferred stainless steel canteen cup here, and we have an aluminium one for um, eating or drinking out of in a bit. Much prefer stainless. And then tonight's sleeping system is the uh, Dutch Army Hoot Bivy. Really looking forward to trying this one out. I was going to fab seal it before we came out, but I want to try it as it is. Full Gore-Tex bag, um, and I did slip into this in the video. Plenty of room. It's going to be even better when it's pegged out, so looking forward to using that. The only cutting tool we've got tonight is the British Army um, Golok or Machete. I did put an edge on this yesterday because the edge that it came with was actually looked like a sawtooth. So we have a few dings in there. I've not I've not filed it back, but they should do the job um, to collect us some firewood tonight. That is pretty much it, ladies and gents. I don't think I've missed anything. No, nope, we've got the bars in there for the hoops uh, for the bivy. And I'm just going to go off screen now and set the admin area up and then collect some firewood. Bring you back soon. So, ladies and gents, the admin shelter is up and running, ready to use. But we are not going to use the sleep system under here tonight. Again, that just disregards the whole point of um, the Dutch Hoop Bivy and its properties. But this will give us a place to retreat to if the shelter does fail. Um, somewhere dry at least and we can have the fire under there as well. So, let's get the Dutch Hoop Bivy out and ready to rock. I'm looking forward to this part. Looking forward to using this. On the underneath of the actual bivy, we've got a couple of retaining straps here, two at the top, one in the middle, two at the bottom. Now I think these are actually designed for a military inflatable sleeping mat, um, but these should accommodate this one nicely. And these straps help to localise your sleeping mat under you so it doesn't wriggle about in the night and slip from under you. So let's try that now. So under the first one, we have two anchor points at the top and then two at the bottom, and that should do the trick nicely. So now we're going to put the necessary bar in. This will create the hoop at the top of the shelter. So that is just basically like that. And then we have a little ridge here, a little runner, and we're going to run the bar through there. I've got to say this one is in absolutely fantastic condition. And then we have a couple of hoops on the side here. You can see there, and we just push them into the rivet holes. Same on this side. A little loop there. Just force that round, clip that in. Now we've got a couple of fabric loops on the back, and these are for pegging out to pull the bivy torch. So the shelter is now pegged out and I think just looking at this it's going to make a really effective shelter depending on the uh, DWR on the fabric. It is a full Gore-Tex so it should be very breathable and whether it keeps the rain out that's another thing but the one thing I do like about this shelter is the L-shaped um, entrance area so we have a zip that runs across the top of the bivy like so and then we have one that runs down the length of the bivy too making it really easy um, to get in and out of the shelter. 
Now, I believe there is two flavours of this Dutch Army um, hoop bivvy, and that is the one made by Corinthia, and this one which is made by Fakir, Fosir, something like that. Um, people do prefer the one made by Corinthia, mainly due to the zips. Um, now I've noticed something on this, the one that runs across the hoop, we have a different zip here. Um, I'm not sure where I've seen that, it might have been on the Savotta or something like that. Definitely seen that zip before, but on the one that runs up the length of the bivvy, we have a YKK. So, um, I believe the one made by this company had dodgy zippers and I think this has had a, a zip replacement in the past. So if that's been mended, it's one less thing for me to worry about. Um, it also has a, a sewn in bug net there, so you can have this partially open for a bit more breathability. Really looking forward to using this one tonight. So, the British Army Golok or Minichetti. First time I've used one of these today. I've used it around camp, chopping up various bits of firewood, um, creating a few poles just to lift that tarp up a little bit higher. Honestly, not necessary today. There's plenty of firewood about, loads of dead wood around this area now, so, but it has been fun using it. Um, it is quite a formidable tool, a fantastic chopper. I'd say when I got this, the edge was better described as a, a sawtooth. We got a Nasty ding just at the tip, uh, tip of the blade there. I've left that in and just sharpened around it. But um, that is pretty much only a rudimentary edge. It's not special. I went from a 400,000, 3,000, 8,000 and then stropped on a diamond um, strop. Pretty, um, pretty bitey edge there. The chopper comes in at a length of 16 inch. Um, and the benefit of having such a long blade like this is you could probably use the last two and a half to three inch of blade towards the handle as a, a fine carving or a fine knife edge. So I'll get that really, really sharp, really slicey. And then as it bellies out to the front of the blade, you could probably have a more obtuse uh, grind on that for chopping. This has got the same grind all the way across. Um, geometry, looking a bit like a hollow grind with a secondary bevel. Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind taking that back fully to a true edge, but I think the thinness of the steel there, that edge wouldn't last long, although it would make a phenomenal slicer. But for the price of this, you can pick these up for 15, 20 quid. Um, well worth having in your kit. Again, great bush tool. Nice little chopper. Awesome. I believe this one is army issue. You can get some fakes out there, but the sheath on this has got um, a name on it. M Don 4427 and McDonald 4427 Golok. So I do believe that this one is the original article. Um, it's been nice to play with again, yeah. Fantastic. Now one thing we didn't comment on with the Golok is the spine. It does feel pretty 90 there. I did try and grind it down a little bit with the stones I had, but we'll see if that can um, strike a fire steel now. We're going to use some of the Twisted Fire Starter or Weather Tinders. Great little tinder this, and this is one of his um, pretty much loads of them in a tray. In fact, we've still got some there from the last one, which we'll use there now. Little strands of string, fluff them up. 
let's see if this can strike a steel. Oh yeah. Can it light our fire though? Good, good, good. Right. Let's just shift that over there. Put the back brace back in action. And we've got a few bits on the side. I'm going to add another one of these just to keep that going. Just pop that there. Well, that was a chuffing effort. I've got a, a ready to go fire triangle. Fire triangle. I've got a ready to go fire triangle just at the side of his ear. Ready to pop on. Better go now. I think I may have to uh, modify the edge, that spine. But yeah, not a bad tool. Not a bad tool at all. Some of my long time subscribers may remember two lads called Ben and Lawrence, his friend. Um, we did a, a winter camp a couple of years ago when the first channel was deleted um, just at the top of this hill where we found the drug paraphernalia. Um, well, I invited them both on this camp because um, I know they are avid wild campers are out all the time, probably more than me. Um, Lawrence straight away said yes. Ben didn't get back to me. and. Um, then Lauren said he couldn't make it because he had prior commitments. Um, little did I know, they both had an argument and they don't talk anymore. So I've invited them both. Ben said he's not going if Lawrence is going. Lauren said he wasn't going so then I've invited Ben again and told him he wasn't going. Now Ben said he might turn up with his kid. And then Lawrence has also said he might be turning up so... Bloody hell. We shall see. Whoever says they're turning up, I'll have to explain to them that the other one might be coming as well. <laughs> so we may have visitors, we may not. Long story short. I have had to retreat from under the tarp. The smoke that fire is producing at the minute is absolutely acrid. Um, I'm choking under there, so I think I might have put some elm on there by mistake. There's lots of it growing just at the back here. It's uh, not great wood for the fire. So plans for the rest of the night. Probably get my beans and sausage on when I can get back under that tarp. Get my tea and then relax. Maybe catch up with some podcasts. And see if we can't see the badgers tonight. I highly doubt it with all that smoke. But you never know. No sign of the... Um... I will say. And I'm not just saying this because every bushcrafter on YouTube. Seems to have visited a uh, haunted wood. 
or they've had someone walking around the camps at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm not saying it because of that, but I have had a very uneasy feeling here today. Um, I've, I've been here quite a few times, done a lot of videos here, but I don't know today. I keep getting, it's definitely not sticks falling from the trees, it, it's snapping underfoot and it's been happening right at the back. It's just happened over there. There's no one on this side apart from me, and it wasn't the fire either. That was definitely a twig snapping under someone's foot. Eee. Might be in for an area one tonight, guys. So, fun fact, ladies and gents, I've just had a elderly gent walking through here with his dog. Um, you notice the fire come down, said low, so that's what I was doing really. He was absolutely fine. Um, I was telling him about the sounds I've been hearing around this part here, around the area, and um, I don't know whether he was just playing along with me or not, but um, he, he told me that in the 1800s, a young lad was um, trampled to death by a horse on this bridle path just here. Um, so, yay! This might be my first haunted um, stalker camp. Because it's definitely an uneasy feeling I've had today. He could be having his own, you never know. Right. Beans and sausage time. So, I made a bit of a, a boo boo before coming out. I put both the water bottles in the pack, totally forgot about them, forgot to fill them. Um, <laughs> I've not even brought the grail, again I'm trying to keep this as much military surplus as possible. So what I've had to do, go down to the river just at the side of the camp here, use my uh, midge net and filter some water here. I'm not going to drink that obviously as it is, but we are going to boil it over the fire. But all I'm saying is, it's a good job we brought a tipple. Some of Grant's finest. Oh, that smoke is so bad. Oh, I need to burn through that now and get some hazel on there. But first, let's see if we can't swap. Uh, let's swap it for some coffee smoke. Uh, bloody hell. So bad that. Can't breathe, my eyes are watering. I've just realised that I've um, boiled two pots of water now. So I've got one in there cooling and I've got my coffee in this. So we haven't got a pot for eating out of. So we're going to have to check inside this and do it the old fashioned way and eat this from the pot. See if it hasn't got a lining. No, I think we're good to go there. And we'll just uh, offer this up to the fire, warm that up slowly. Um, I don't usually get very hungry when I'm doing this sort of thing because I'm always filming or um, collecting firewood and stuff. but I've, um, Built up a bit of an appetite today, and I can't wait to tuck into my uh, short biscuits and a bit shoot fruit shorties. Lovely jubbly. It's got a bit of a cheeky nip to the coffee. I've left the camera like this, ladies and gents, nice and wide, just in case you happen to see anything behind me. We are still getting the ominous cracking of sticks underfoot. Um, could be small animals, you never know, I've not seen anything. But there's a lot of leaf litter on the floor now, so... Well, yeah, never felt like this here before. Strange one. I think we might read some ghost stories in a bit. Just to make sure I really don't sleep tonight. <sighs> Chow time. I've just gone to the river to retrieve my other water bottle. Uh, that was filtering through the midge nets. It's been there for about an hour and it was empty. Um, it's got a very narrow neck that one compared to the other one. Probably why 
it didn't suck anything in. Right, beans and sausage time. See how this fares. Cowboy style, out the tin. Mmm, oh. sustenance. I really like this cutlery set as well. I believe this is German again. Just make good stuff. I've had this one for an age now. Really thick stainless steel as well. Does the job perfectly. Some nice um, choice pieces to put on the fire afterwards. To get us through the night. Might do a bit of a ghost investigation and a bit down the way. See if we can't um, communicate with the little lad. Hot, hot, hot. Mm. Also, it's a good job the bottle didn't work down there because there was a dog in the river for about 10 minutes. Probably pissed in there, right in my bottle. <laughs> so, at least I've got a cup cool in there in case I need a drink in a bit. And I've got plenty of coffee. So, all good. That smoke has died down a bit now. Um, a lot of these bottom logs, I think, are the elm as well. Absolutely horrible so far. Horrible. Oh, in other news, we were in the news, <laughs> believe it or not. If you're from the UK, you'll know the Sun newspaper. How much you regard that as a proper tabloid, it's down to you. But um, <clears throat> I had a reporter contact me asking if they could use that story on, use my video in their story. I said, yeah, absolutely fine. So I'll put a clip up there now, you see in the corner. Um, the first video we put on when we became homeless is actually in the news. We went from page two, now we're on page four. I might, if I do one of these again, if I collect any more surplus gear, I might. Oh, I see. I'm seeing things out of the corner of my eye now. You know what they say, if you think you've seen something in the corner of your eye, you usually have. And I've just seen someone walking right there. That would definitely a pair of legs. 100%. They say you do see stuff in your peripheral. Um, I am a believer in ghosts. I don't know about yourselves, but um, yeah, I do believe in ghosts. I don't believe they can harm you. But um, I believe they're definitely there. Maybe existing on another plane. Ain't it funny though, it's always little Victorian girls in dresses or nuns. <laughs> Ladies and gents, the channel has now surpassed 11,200 subscribers. Say that with me. 11,000. 200 awesome wonderful subscribers what an awesome number that is i never thought we'd get there to be honest um as you know this is the third attempt to have a, a decent channel now we lost a lot of footage on the way but um, we give it one more go and we got there well we're getting there I've never known a tin of sausage and beans to have as many sausage as this one. 
I'll open the other tin, it'll be all beans. And I know a lot of you have been asking in the channel why we're not making the vlogs anymore. Janina's actually got her own channel now, so any future vlogs will be on there. Um, if you check out the torch video in the playlist on the gear reviews, I did leave a um, link. Well, there's even one in the community post, there's a link to Janine's channel, so you can go check it out there. She's done a few cooking vids now. Um, we will be looking to do more in the future, but it's difficult running two channels, and you know, this is the one that started the channel, the bushcraft. But we will try and get more and more on Janine's side. She's still suffering the anxiety from being in front of the camera, but she's getting there. Ooh, right, so, guys and girls, Halloween, All Hallows Eve is nearly upon us, so, why don't we do some scary stories told in the dark? The first one is called, Who's in My Bed? A father went to say goodnight to his seven-year-old son, knowing very well, if he didn't, his son would have trouble sleeping. It was a nightly routine between them. He entered the dimly lit room where his son waited under his blanket. With a first glance, the father could tell there was something unusual about his son tonight, but couldn't put his finger on it. He looked the same, but had a grin that drew from ear to ear. You okay, buddy? The father asked. The son nodded, still with a grin, before saying, Daddy, check under the bed for monsters. The father chuckled a bit before getting on his knees to check only to satisfy his son. There under the bed, pale and afraid, was his son, his real son. He whispered, Daddy, there's someone on my bed. The cabin. A hiker decided to go on a hike by himself, something he was not very used to. The whole day was normal, trees and bushes engulfed his surroundings. He enjoyed being outdoors in the mountains. Nothing seemed strange to him. That was until he was making his way back to his car. He figured an eight hour hike was good enough. The sky was getting dark and he needed to get back fast. What was odd was how much he didn't recognize the trail on the way back and he began to panic. Night had already taken over and all he had was a flashlight and no clue on how to get back. He knew it was already too late and too dangerous to keep going through the perilous forest. He began to worry he would have no shelter for the night when almost luckily he came across a broken down cabin. It was dark and seemed like no one had visited in years, but he knew it was the only place where he could rest until daylight, especially since the batteries in his flashlight were running low. He knocked on the door a few times, but no one answered, so he let himself in, where strangely enough, a small bed, perfectly fitted for one person, awaited him in the center of the room. He knew that if the owner came back, he would explain himself, and he was sure the owner wouldn't mind, or was probably even dead. So he went ahead and got himself comfortable in the bed. As he tried to sleep, he couldn't ignore the collection of paintings around him in the room. Portraits of strange looking people all peering at him, each wearing a smile that sent chills up his spine. Not too long after his exhaustion from the hike got the best of him, and he was able to ignore the faces. The next morning, he got up early and was shocked to see there were no paintings on the wall, but windows all around the room. Yeah, enough of that, I've got to sleep out here tonight. Buggered it. <laughs> oh, right, it's pitch black now. The last of the wood is on the fire. It's around seven o'clock, so I think we might do that little ghost tour in a bit. Have a chat with the little lad and uh, get myself off to bed for an early dart in the morning. Right, ladies and gents, it's time to leave the safety and security of the campfire and go on a spooky quest to see if we can't find a little boy who was trampled by a horse. Piss off. <laughs> So if what the old man told me was true, along this path, a young lad in the 1800s was trampled to death by a horse. Now again, this is a bridle path, and all along here we have a hazel coppice. Got a huge tree that has gone down there since the last time I came. 
But this pathway, especially when the light starts to go down, does look really, really ominous. As you can probably see there. <laughs> so we set around where the fence was. There's the fence, but there is an old, I have noticed um, stumps for an old fence in, in here as well, so it could mean that. Really old stumps. Further in the back are old brushes. But um, there's the gate and the fence. And the path does go all the way up here as well. But we have got this post here. And one just behind it. Now these look very old. 1800s, I'm not sure. There's some old nails in there. Some old clouts. These could be from the 1800s. This is where they probably meant. another one so we could have meant around here and that path goes all the way up to there and down to the river down there <coughs> is there anyone with me here you'd like to maybe contact and talk to me Maybe a little lad who was tragically killed around this area in the 1800s. Please don't murder me. I mean you no harm. <laughs> That's a nervous laugh, I'm not laughing at you. If you'd like to make yourself known, give me a sign. Maybe snap a twig if that's what you were doing before. I feel an absolute complete plonker here, so if there is anyone here, let me know. Are you a little lad? He was killed here in the 1800s by a horse. A horse trampled you to death. If you want to come and talk to me, you can do. I don't mean you any harm. This path leads down to the river. Why do you feel like you're going to be pushed into the water? <laughs> you let's head back. Let's stand in that area. <clears throat> See if we don't get some sort of sign. So I'm here waiting for a response. You can
can do anything you want to let me know you're here just don't touch me because uh, I will run a mile probably break my ankles in the process just give me a sign snap stick throw a rock anything I think I maybe should have brought the 12,000 lumen torch. <laughs> okay, well I'm heading back to camp now, so you stay here and I'll stay over there. Um, and I won't bother you again tonight. Well, we did try ladies and gents, we didn't get any response. I'm guessing we're just laying low until tonight. And it's going to murder me in my uh, coffin shaped bivvy. Mm -hmm. My name is Jeff. Are you still burning? Yeah. Right, it's time for bed. Have a nice cold and ready for me to drink now. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't wake up in the night. I have excruciating stomach pains and even the toilets. We are going to be keeping the uh, mini shetty at hand. And just slide that in there. Camera can go in there also. Jobs are good. Let's try and make this look as graceful as possible. So we've got a there we go. So we're on the side zip not <laughs> going into There we go. I can see it now, I can visualize it. I'm free sleeping back. Awesome. Right. Let's take this off. Well, I definitely feel comfortable. Very warm underneath already on these two bags. Should be absolutely perfect tonight. So let's uh, get the zipped up and I will see you guys inside. Thank you. 
Ну, вот здесь я Ну, Well, as your buggers have got the fireworks going off, I have got massive neck strain. <laughs> oh. Do you know what? There's absolutely loads of room behind me there at the back, but the the matting's here. So I'm thinking maybe squash my pillow in there and move up a bit, and I might have a bit more breathing space. My concern is if I needed to get out of here in a hurry. Would I be able to locate the zips in the night? We've got a separate one for the bug net, so we'll just have to pull that out. And then we've got the one down the side. Thinking about it, the uh, mattress underneath, even though it is underneath the shelter it's still pushing me upwards so um, this is taking a lot of real estate I think I may have to try it with a thinner mat maybe the uh, three quarter therma rest but yeah even my shoulders are getting crushed at the top here it's squashing my shoulders do I let some air out the air mat I'll just try and sleep on my back all night. Just looking at that screen makes me feel claustrophobic. We're going caving guys, we're going caving. <laughs> oh, actually. Is that a zip? I'm zipping it the wrong, I'm zipping it the wrong pissing way. Where's the other zip? Right, where's the zip? Not on the zips. This is definitely going to take some getting used to. Now my arse is squashed up against it. <laughs> Oh, it's a bit comfy sleeping on the front, but now I can't spread my legs. Oh. <sighs> Does feel very coughing like. Well, the rain's made an appearance, which is good. You can now test the shelter for waterproofness. I've just had to put the bug net away and zip the shelter back up, so it's a bit warm in here now. Especially with that torch, it does give off some heat. It's uh, coming down steadily that now. Oh, that's coming down quite heavy now actually. Well warmth definitely isn't a problem. I'm very warm in here. It's very nice. I'm hoping this uh, rain cools us down a bit. Because with that um, entrance zips up it does get very warm. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> I 
my neck is on fire and every time I move this pillow the foam falls over see <sighs> right ladies and gents I have barely got room to use a bleeding phone and a torch in the shelter so I'm going to end the video there um, I don't think you're going to want to stare up my nose all bleeding night so I will see you in the morning hopefully for a, a lovely breakfast of sausage and beans and a nice hot coffee so good night to all I'll see you in the morning bye bye Now clearly I haven't been up once to put the camera out. Not been out all night in the rain. I'm watching me all night. Oh. Oh, <clears throat> so my first night in the Dutch Army Hoop Bivy. That was an experience, I can tell you that. Probably, probably a few things I'll do differently next time. One, um, not wear such a thick wool top in there. That strangled me all night. Wrapping around my arms, twisting and turning. Um, and maybe a thinner pad, although it did keep me very warm last night. I will say, for any of you guys that struggle with um, tight spaces, might not be for you. It definitely does take some getting used to. And uh, for me, the main battle was that visual element. When you've got light in there and you can see just how little much, how, how little room you've got, it really does play in your mind. And panic sat with me a few times yesterday, I had to calm myself down. Um, when the lights go out and it's pitch black, you do start to settle down. It's a, it's a very warm shelter. And I must say, this bag kept me absolutely toasty all night. It's just amazing how much that pile lining can keep you warm. We didn't get any rain um, inside the shelter last night after we pulled that flap over the zip, which is a good thing. Um, lots and lots of condensation inside. Well, that's to be as it, that is to be expected. Um, as we know, Gore-Tex can't do two things at once. So once it's wet. Um, it's not very breathable, even though that's what they like to make you think. No major pooling though, no pooling at all actually. Nothing dripped on my head, and it's just like a damp sort of sensation. Oh, right, about about five hours kip, not too bad. Let's get some breakfast on, I can smell another tin of... Um, Beans and sausage. Let's go. Right, ladies and gents, now I'm a bit more awake. Let's have a look at the final piece of kit we're using for the Army Surplus Camp. So this is the ultralight um, foil sort of um, survival stove that was considered by the British Army to be used. Ultimately, they did go with another design, but this is a prototype of that stove. Um, Brilliant stove really, it is designed to be used with your Crusader cups, perfect fit in there, just sits on the top and your alcohol burner uh, lives in the bottom of it. I will say, if this stove does take your fancy, um, good luck finding one. Um, I've not seen another one of these available since this was gifted to me a few years ago, now at the Buscraft Show, but um, we are going to use this today to cook our beans and sausage and get a coffee on. There we go. I'll just give it a quick clean. And that simply pops in like that and that's ready to go. So that took no time at all. And then we've got a little tab on the back here. We can hold on to that just while we lift our cup out. Right guys, so we've got my sausage and beans in here, we've got a double mega hit of caffeine in this cup, a sachet of Nescaf, one of my uh, brew company barista coffees as well, and a sugar. So, if this doesn't wake me up, nothing will. Oh. 
I don't usually take sugar, but when I do, oh, I have one. Yesterday, before I came out to camp, I kid you not, I had a cheese string, um, and then I had a tin of this at camp, that's all I had. My stomach was rumbling all night, but it was raining. And my biscuits were in my bag under the tarp, so I couldn't even have them. Sad times. Okay, ladies and gents, so this is where we part ways once again. Just before I go, I'd like to share my insights and experiences camping with purely uh, military-grade surplus kits. So if you're looking for heavy-duty, robust, bomb-proof, but very heavy kits, and you don't mind everything being covered in camouflage or drab, drab colours, then absolutely... Spend all your cash on army surplus gear because that one kit will probably last you a lifetime. On the other hand, um, surplus kit used to be a budget option. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. Um, a lot of these items have gained popularity in the bushcraft community now, so prices have risen. Uh, for example, the Dutch Army Hoop Bivy. Uh, that is now, I've seen it for as much as this is ridiculous. If I find the link, I'll put it up. £238 in the UK. Um, the second lowest I've seen it for is 148 but the run of the mill price is around £110 for that hoop bivvy. The bag, you probably picked them up at one point for a couple of quid like I did on car boot. Now you're looking at about 40, 50 quid, maybe a bit more for the long back Bergen. Um, the Arctic sleeping bag, I picked my first one up for £10 on eBay and it was a grey day, absolutely brand new. Um, now you're looking at about 40, 50 quid for them as well so... Unfortunately, um, for what you're paying for army surplus kit now, you're paying the same price, maybe a bit more, uh, for its high street retail equivalent. Even the military surplus cut kits, the Canteen Crusader cut kits, um, they could have been out for a very small price back in the day. And a lot of them still can be, but if you're looking for something particular, maybe a vintage model, um, you are going to be paying hundreds of pounds for that model because unfortunately people have bought that again due to popularity in the bushcraft scene um, and supply and demand has obviously drove them prices up. So there is still budget options in there, but the better gear that has become popular, um, you're going to be paying through the nose for. So you need to make that decision whether you want to be paying that price for surplus kit that will last, or you want to go to the high street and buy more modern day uh, materials, lighter materials that are probably just as durable to be honest. So it's definitely, um, something to consider. I have really enjoyed camping with that today. Um, I think I was a bit critical with the Dutch Army hoop bivvy last night being inside. That was my first time in there. Um, but once the lights went out and I couldn't really see anything around me, uh, I started to settle and I got an hour's kip. <laughs> now I got about five hours kip last night. I think I nodded off about four o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely use it again, probably a thinner mattress. I will say with a hoop bivvy, you have got them uh, restraints underneath for your inflatable mat. Now that is designed for its own bespoke mat, which is a lot wider. And the thing I found last night, if you're using a smaller mat with that Dutch Ute bivvy, um, then the bottom of the bivvy is just going to mould around it. And say your pad's two or three inches, that's going to send you two or three inches uh, to the top of the bivvy, if that makes sense. Because the base isn't laying flat on the mat, it's actually rolling over. Um, so yeah, I think that made sense anyway. So I think a thinner mat, um, I'll keep the Savata mat, but I was very warm in there, very toasty. And again, after we sorted that flap out over the zip, there was no water ingress in there apart from a bit of condensation, which is to be expected. But um, yeah, fantastic bit of kit that. I might go for an army basher um, just to finish the uh, surplus kit off. I can't think of anything else I'd need really. I don't fancy going with the old army style torches because they're just novelties as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather carry a modern day torch and be safe than uh, carry a two candescent light bulb and a, an L shaped sort of torch. But yeah, fantastic camp all round. One more thing, sorry ladies and gents, um, I'm trying not to waffle, I won't keep you much longer. The British Army Gollock or the um, Mini Shetty brought this to use around camp yesterday. It is quite a formidable chopping tool. Uh, we did some chopping with that and I even had to resort to using the blade 
on the fire steel I cannot see any edge deformation on there but uh, going off track when I went to bed last night I was watching my friend's channel um, Floyd from Green Valley Outdoors and it's funny because he was talking about this exact uh, machete well a machete of this sort anyway uh, and he was saying this is actually a banned item and it is a banned item um, if you get caught with this on a camp in a, a local woodland not like what I'm doing this is all private um, there will be no good enough excuse for you to have this in your possession and you will face the full brutality of the law um, this again is very very banned now and unless you need this for work purposes uh, maybe part of the forestry commission or something like that you have no right to have this on you um, I think the class now has zombie knives or zombie choppers um, you can get these in all sorts of shapes and sizes now you can get them with sawtooths they're very very highly much illegal um, but just having that is going to get you in much trouble with the law forget about your folding locking knives or your five inch bushcraft knives um, this is going to do the trick for you so bear that in mind if you do dare take this out with you um, on your next camp Right, ladies and gents, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed being out testing the surplus kit on this camp. The next video should be the Winniewell Fastfold Plus Titanium uh, with nesting pipe. We'll get out and do that next weekend. We'll do some cooking on that and then test it in the smoky hut um, hot tent. Until then, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.